Hello all, this is Anish with you. Welcome to my channel. In this ASP.NET Core tutorial, we will see how to create a project with identity login screen using identity framework. Then we will also learn how to add identity framework login and register screens to a existing ASP.NET Core application. Let's see the demo of the application which we are going to build. In this application, I have added login screen and register screen using the identity framework. Let's click the login link to view the login screen. Wow, that's look great. I have used glassmorphism techniques to make the login screen to semi-transparent dialog. Now let's click the register link. This is the registration screen. This also looks beautiful. Let's register a new user to test the application. Enter tester1 as username and tester1 at gmail.com as email address and enter some password. I have used 123 at test. Then click the register button. Wow, the registration is successful and the user is logged into the application. Notice the unit's link become visible after the user is logged in. Earlier it was hidden. This unit link is visible only to the authenticated users. Now let's log out. If you have missed to notice the initial home screen, you can see it now. Notice the units menu. It is hidden now. Ok, let's click the login link. In here, enter tester1 in the username text box and 123 at test in the password box and then check the remember me checkbox. After that, click the login button. The user is successfully logged in now. So our registration screen and the login screen are working fine. Let's see how it is done. Start Visual Studio 2019 and click create a new project. And in here select C Shop in the language selection list box. After that select web from the project type selection list box. And now all the web based projects of C Shop language is listed here. From this list select ASP.NET Core web app using model, view and controller. In my screen it is listed in the fourth row. Click next and enter identity test in the project name box. After that enter the location of your choice. But I always save all my tutorial projects in codes by Anis folder of the E drive. And then click the checkbox place solution and project in the same directory and press the next button. In here notice the target framework is set to .NET 5.0 which is the current so leave it to the default selection. Then in the authentication type select individual accounts. After that click the enable razor runtime and press the create button to start the scaffolding task. In case if you are prompted with the publish options dialog box just click the cancel button because we are not going to publish this project anywhere now. Our project is scaffolded now. Let's see what all the files are scaffolded by the Visual Studio and we'll try to understand the purpose of some of the important scaffolded files. I have opened the app settings.json. In this the connection string of database is scaffolded in the default connection key of connection string section. This connection string points to the SQL server which comes up with the Visual Studio 2019. But I like to use the standalone SQL server of my machine. So let me change the connection string to point my standalone SQL server. First change the database name to identity test. After that change the server to local within the bracket. Now the connection string is pointing to the standalone SQL server of my machine. But if you do not have the standalone version, please go ahead and use the SQL server of the Visual Studio. After that, let's do the migration because the scaffolding task has not created the identity database. We should create by running the migration commands. Click and open the package manager console from the NuGet package manager menu. 
In this package manager console window, let's type our first migration command. Type add dash migration and leave a space then type create db in quotes and wait for the command to complete. After the add migration command is completed, type update dash database and wait for update database to complete. This is the command which will create the database in the backend SQL server. After that, let's open the SQL Server Management Studio Express and right click the databases folder and click refresh menu. Now we can see the database named identity test is created. Let's explore the tables of the database. We will see the importance of other tables in the upcoming future videos. In this video, we are going to see only about the ASP.NET users table. This is the table which will hold all the user information like username, password hash, email, etc. Currently, this table has no rows because we have not added any users to it so far. But we will add few users in couple of minutes. Here I have changed the SQL statement to select start from ASP.NET users to make the select query simple. Let's build and run the application. Wow, the application has run successfully and we can notice two menu links at the right side namely register and login. Let's click the login menu and we can see the default login screen which was scaffolded by the Visual Studio. Since we have not created any users so far, we cannot log in. So click the register menu to load the register page. We will be creating our first user now. Hello all, making YouTube video takes lot of time and efforts. But all these efforts should have a meaning. So please like, comment and share this video. Thanks a lot. Let's continue to the tutorial. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get notified. This is the registration page. Let's register a user. I am going to sign up using my email id quotesbyanis at gmail.com. This is my email id. You can send your suggestions and feedbacks to this email so that I will try to improve. Then let's enter a dummy password. I entered 123 at code s as password and then re-enter the same password and press the register button. The email id is registered successfully and we need to click this link to verify the account. Normally this would be sent in an email to the user for verification. By this way we verify that the email belongs to the user. But why is this required? Because it helps to protect our software from the bot registrations. Bot is a program something similar to virus which runs in the background and steals many sensitive information and makes your PC vulnerable. Then let's click the confirm link to verify the email. After that we will go to the SQL Server Management Studio and view the user which we just created. Notice the column email confirmed is having a value of 1. 1 means true and 0 means false in the boolean terms. This row is having 1 because we already confirmed the email link. And an important thing should be noted here. There are two columns username and email in this table which are having the same value. This is the default behavior of identity framework. But if you want to have separate values for username and email id, we can easily do it. I will show you how that can be done in this video. Now we will log in to the application using the username and password we just created. Wow, we are successfully logged into the application. Notice our username is shown in the right side corner and logout link is added next to it. Let's click the logout link and notice now the logout link is replaced by the register and login links. Then let's go to the db context file of this application. Notice the application db context class is inherited from the identity db context. 
this identity db context class is inherited from the db context class. Then notice in the solution explorer below the www root folder we have areas folder and inside that folder we have identity folder and in that folder we have pages folder. Why is this folder here? We never used to have this folder before. This folder is created by the ASP.NET Core identity framework and we must have this folder to use the built-in identity framework. Then open the underscore view start dot csHTML partial view file from the pages folder. Notice here this page has the layout variable set to our layout file which is in the shared folder. In the shared folder below the layouts.cshtml there is a new file named underscore login partial dot cshtml. This is the file which shows register and login link and displays username and logout links after the user is logged in. Let's open this login partial dot cshtml file to understand it. First we are referencing the library microsoft.aspnetcore.identity otherwise the intelligence will throw errors. Then the second and third line is very important. Actually when we want to use some service from the controller we get the service in the constructor method like shown in the green box which is inside the red box. But if you want to use the service in a view file how will you do that? On that scenario we use the inject keyword. This inject keyword will retrieve the service object from the dependency injection. Here the instances of sign in manager and user manager services are retrieved and stored in the variable sign in manager and user manager so that the sign in manager and user manager service will be available for this login partial view. ASP.NET Core gives us a variable named user but we need to check is the user is signed in or not by passing the user climb to the sign in manager dot is sign method. If the user is signed in then we display the user and name and logout link. But if the user is not logged in then we display the login and register links. After that let's open the startup.cs. Here we have something important to note. In the configure services method of startup.cs we first add the db contacts to the services collection. This we have already seen in our inventory project. So let's go to the next line. This is the important line. Here we are adding the ASP.NET Core identity to the dependency services collection. Notice we are passing options.signin.required confirmed account equals to true. If we make this as false then the user is not required to confirm the email at the registration but that's not recommended. Then let's go to the configure method. Here also we have some important points to note. First one is endpoints.map raise our pages. This is very important because the identity framework user interface pages are designed using raise our class libraries. To call pages from the raise our class library project we must call the method endpoints.map razor pages in the configure method of the startup.cs. The next important line is app.use authentication. We must add this line, then only the server will check if the user is authenticated. That means the server will find who the user is. The next line is app.use authorization. Authorization is used to check the user rights. If you don't add this line, then the identity framework will not work. Let's go to the login page. Notice in the right hand side we can see use another service to login box. This is used to add external logins like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Twitter etc. In this video we are not going to see anything about it because external login is a big topic and it deserves a separate video. So far we were learning how to add ASP.NET Core identity to a new project. This is little easy.
because almost everything was done by the scaffolding task. But how do we add identity framework to an existing project? Because we need to add login and logout screens to our inventory project. That's going to be very interesting. Let's do it. I have opened the inventory project from my system in which we are working for some time now. Let's go to NuGet Package Manager and click Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. After that, type identity.ntt in the search box and press Enter. Select Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.IdentityNTT Framework Core from the list and select Inventory Beginners from the project list and click Install. Notice in the projects list there is another project named Tools exist. This is because we have moved all our pagination and sorting logics to this project. But that's not important for this video now. Then if you are prompted by the preview changes dialog box, press OK. Then press I accept in the license acceptance dialog box. That's it. Identity framework got installed successfully to our project. Maybe you can note it down as step 1. After that, open the DB context file of our inventory project. This file is named as inventory context. Notice inventory context class is inherited from the db context class but to use the identity framework we must inherit our db context file from the identity db context class just for reference i have opened the db context file from our identity test project so let's copy the identity db context class name from the identity test project and paste it to our inventory project. After pasting, we got the error indicator below. Click Show Potential Fixes and select using Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.IdentityNTTFrameworkCore. Now the error got disappeared. After that, we need to add the identity service in the startup.cs. So, open the startup.cs file. Then, flip over to the identity test project and open the startup.cs file in the identity test project. From here, copy the line which is adding the identity to the services collection. Now, flip over to the inventory project's startup.cs file and paste the copied text below the services add db context line. Now to fix the error click show potential fixes and select using microsoft.asp.core.identity. After that change the application db context to inventory context because our db context class name is inventory context in the inventory project. For our surprise even doing all the suggested fixes there is an error indicator below the services add default identity. Why like this? What have we missed? No worries, I will find it out off the screen and will tell you in few seconds. Yes, found out. We forgot to, sorry, I forgot to add the identity user interfaces library. So, go to NuGet Packet Manager and select Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Then type identity.ui in the search box. After that, click the checkbox of inventory beginners and click install. Then click OK for the preview change dialog box if it prompts and I accept button in the license acceptance dialog box. Now open the startup.cs file and check the error. Wow, the error has disappeared now. That's great. So you may note it down this as step 2 because we forgot sometimes. Then notice that we set the options dot sign in dot require confirmed account equals to false. That means the registered user can straight away can start using the application. But I do not recommend this. I prefer to set this parameter to true. 
Next, we have to do the migration to create the identity related tables. So, go to NuGet Package Manager and select Package Manager Console. In the Package Manager Console, type Add Dash Migration Space Add Identity in quotes. This is just a remark description. It can be anything. Feel free to type whatever you wish. Maybe you can also type Creating Identity Tables in quotes. After that, just wait for few minutes to add migration command to complete. Then after, type update dash database and press enter. Then wait for update database to complete. Now let's go to the SQL Server Management Studio and refresh the tables folder of our database. Notice all the tables related to the identity framework are added to our database. Let's browse the ASP.NET users table as expected it is empty. Next we need to add the endpoints.map razor pages to our configure method of the startup.cs. Let's copy it from the identity test project and paste it here. Why am I comparing the scaffolded project while doing something in the actual project? Because while learning or teaching we should compare and study then only it goes up to the brain and it becomes easy to remember. It's just my way and it is working well for me. Please put in comments if this idea works for you also. Next we need to add the login and register pages to our project. We don't need to develop these pages by ourselves because it is already available in the identity UI framework. So we just need to add them. Right click the solution explorer then click add and then select a new scaffolded item. In here select identity from the items list and click the add button. After that wait for few minutes for the scaffolded items listing page to load and prompt. Then in the prompted items listing dialog box select the items account slash register then account slash login and account slash logout. Click the data context class drop down list and select the inventory context. Now click the add button and wait for the scaffolding task to complete. Wow now the pages are added. You can notice a new folder named areas added to the solution explorer below the www root folder. And also expand the shared folder inside the views folder. In here Notice the login partial view file is added by the scaffolding task. Open the login partial.cshtml and just have fast look on it because we have already seen this file in our identity test project. So I think I don't need to explain the same again. And then expand the areas folder which is below the www root folder. After that expand the identity folder followed by pages and account folder. Then after open the register.cshtml from the account folder. This is the same file which we saw in the identity test project. We will come back to this file soon. And then open the layouts.cshtml file from the shared folder which is inside the views folder. In the layouts.cshtml after the closing of ul tag add a partial view with name equals to underscore login partial. Then only the register and login links will appear in the top right side corner. In the identity test project we have not done this step because we had selected authentication at the time of creating that project. But we created this inventory project without authentication. So we need to do this step. Ok let's build and run the application. Wow we got the register and login menus here. Let's click the register menu to create our first user. Let's enter test at test.com and enter 123 at codes as the password. Wow our first user is created but we did not get any confirmation message and also it is again showing the register and login link. 
this is wrong buggy program it's okay we will fix it point number one it did not show the confirmation message because we set options dot sign in dot require confirm account equals to false if we change this to true then the first error will get solved second issue is a serious one even if we try to log in it is not logging in it returns to the same page this is serious so let's check and fix this issue oh i made a mistake i forgot to call the method app dot use authentication in the configure method of the startup dot cs let's insert the app dot use authentication method in the configure method this has to be inserted above app dot use authorization method now build and run the application let's enter the same username and password again and then click the login button wow this time it got logged in from this we learn the importance of the app dot use authentication method and app dot use authorization method calls let's register one more user enter email id as anis youtube at gmail dot com and enter password as 12345 and re-enter the password as 12345 to the confirm password box also wow it did not accept because identity framework by default enforces the complex password policy but if we want we can disable the password complexity let's enter a proper password this time i type 123 at codes yes now the user is created successfully and also the user got logged in this is what i told you if we set the require confirmed account equals to false then anyone can register and directly log in without our knowledge now let's click the logout button yes the user is logged out and the menus got changed to register and login notice the units menu link is visible even before logging in home and privacy link should be visible always but units links should not be visible to unauthorized users to hide the units menu link from the unauthorized users we need to add a if condition in the layouts.cs html before opening the layouts.cs html open the login partial.cs html and copy the sign in manager and user manager injecting codes then after open the underscore layouts.cs html partial view and paste the copied text to the top of the page i mean after the using section then in the layouts.cs html go to the line above the units menu link and add a if condition to check is the user is signed in then close the if condition block after the units menu link no basically the units menu link is wrapped up inside a if condition block so that it is visible to only to the authorized users then build and run the application to see the changes we just made notice now the units menu is hidden because the user is not authenticated perfect this is what we want let's log in using the user test.test.com and enter the password and then press the login button now the user test.test.com is logged in and the units menu link becomes visible for him let's click the units menu and then units listing page is loaded that's great let's log out the user from the application and try to open the unit module using the cached link or directly typing the route of unit module in the address bar oh my god the unauthorized user has opened the unit module and is able to do what all he wants in the unit module this is a dangerous and serious issue but the question is how is he able to access the unit module because we had only hidden the links from the unauthorized access but we did not protect the unit module from the unauthorized access so how to do that that's very important open the unit controller.cs and in the head of the unit controller.cs add an attribute named authorize in the square bracket it is showing error indicator below 
but this is because the required namespace is not yet added. So click show potential fixes and select using microsoft.aspnet.authorization. Now the error is disappeared and we are ready to go. So let's run the application. We will try to access the unit module by typing the route of the unit module directly in the address bar. That's it. Now the unauthorized user is not able to access the unit module and he has been redirected to login page. This is the correct approach and now we can say that our software is protected. Guys, I am taking lot of efforts to give all the production content for free and trying to make everybody as a professional programmers. All this effort should have a meaning. So will you please like and share and then subscribe to this channel. And I also wants to tell you many of you are liking my videos. Thank you so much for that. But if you put comments along with the likes, it will be very useful for YouTube to recommend my videos. So please do comment. Okay, let's come back to the subject. Notice the address bar link ASP.NET Core has appended the redirect URL percentage here followed by the unit. This means the user will be redirected to the unit's listing page instead of the home page after the successful login. Let's check this. Enter test at test.com in the username and his password in the password box and then click the login button to login. Yes, as I told you, we are redirected to the unit's listing page. Now let's try to do all the actions of the unit's module. Yes, all the actions are through. The program is working perfectly as we wanted. Let's log out of the program and I want to remove the external login div and wanted to give the user an option to login either by entering username or email id. Let's see how it is done. Open the register.cshtml.cs under the account folder which is under the areas slash identity slash pages folder. Here you can see two files. First one is register.cshtml and the second one is register.cshtml.cs. Basically the first file is view file and the second file is the code behind file. This was the Microsoft approach to separate the server side codes from the HTML mockups. This solution was very successful until the coming of MVC. Okay, let's come back to the identity framework. In the register.cshtml.cs file, expand the input model class. This is the model for our registration page. Add a public property named username and make this property as required one and set the maximum length to 50 characters. Now open the register.cshtml file and copy the form group div of email and paste above the email form group div. After that change the input.email to input.username in the pasted div. Then after open the register.cshtml.cs file and locate the onPost async method. Difference between async method and normal method is async method runs asynchronously. That means it runs in a separate thread and sometimes even in a separate process. Synchronous methods run in the same thread and always in the same process. We will see more about the async method in a separate video. First, we will delete the external logins from this method. We will see external logins later. Then, if the model state is valid, we are creating a variable named user of type identity user. In here, notice by default ASP.NET Core is passing input.email to both username and email properties of the identity user. This is the reason for usernames and emails are same in most of the ASP.NET Core applications. But we want to separate it. So let's set username to input.username instead of input.email. Next, we try to create the user by calling the user manager dot create a sync with it by passing the user and input dot password as parameters. If we get the success result, 
then we are requesting a email confirmation token from the user manager let's comment the and ignore the logger line we don't want the email confirmation token so comment all quotes till the if block these quotes are for sending the email confirmation link to the user but currently no email provider is configured in our system and we are going to display confirmation link on the screen then after in the if block we check is the application is configured to request confirmed accounts this we set in the startup.cs if so then we redirect the user to the register confirmation page otherwise we directly log into the application using the user details and forward to the return url let's remove all the commented lines to make our code to look simple in case if the result is not succeeded then we collect the errors from the result.errors list and passing it to the user by adding those to the model state.error collection that's it here let's run the application and register a new user wow we have successfully registered the new user named anis mohammad notice now the username is displayed as anis mohammad and not the anis youtube one at gmail dot com. Let's go to the SQL Server and open the ASP.NET Users table. Notice here the username and emails are different because we entered different values for username and email. Next, we need to log in using the username which we just created. But here, if we enter the email address, then we are getting an error saying invalid login attempt. At the same time, if we try to enter the username, then we get the client side validation error. So we are stuck. What to do now? No worries, we will solve it. Open the login.cshtml.cs, then remove the email property from the input model class of login.cshtml.cs. After that, add a new property named username and make it as a required property and also add the display attribute to username as username or email. After that, open the login.cshtml and change the input.email to input.username. And then open the login.cshtml.cs and change the input.email to input.username. Then after build and run the application. Now let's enter the username and password and click the login button. Yes, it is logging in. That's great. We are off way done. But we also want to give the user an option to enter email or username. So log out. And let's try entering the email and password. No, it is not logging in. So how to do that? Open the login.cshtml.cs and locate the method on post async. In that, inside the model.isValid if block, add a variable named username and set it to input.username. After that, check if the username is having any add symbol in it. If it is having add symbol, then it means the user has entered the email address in the username text box. Let's find the corresponding username of the specified email address by using the user manager dot find by email async. If we are not able to find the user, then add the error saying invalid email address or email address is not found and return the page. If we find the user, then set the variable username to user.username. After that, save and run the application. Let's try logging in using the email by entering a valid email in the email text box.
Wow, it got logged in. Now log out and try entering a valid username. Yes, the user is logged in. So our program is now able to log in by email or username. But what will happen if we enter a wrong email ID? Let's try that also. When we enter an invalid email ID, I mean the email ID which does not exist in the database, we get an invalid email address error. With this, I am completing this video. Before I sign off, I request you to subscribe and share this video. I would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified for all of the new videos that I will be posting. Thank you and bye for now.